everybody, and welcome along to the history program with uh, me, Tony Brown, and of course, Tom Donovan. Uh, and uh, today we want to talk about, and there's something different again, as most of you out there know, I try to do different aspects of history each week. And uh, today I have uh, with me uh, Jerry Adams. Jerry, first of all, you're welcome to the program. And you don't need any introduction, I suppose, as such, you know. They'll probably look and say, actually, Tom, you'd want to grow a beard, so you'll be kind of, um, you'll kind of fit in a bit better, you know. Yeah. And anyway, anyway, Jerry. Jerry, we did, actually, we met before. I met you about, God, it was before years ago, when you were down promoting Morris Quinlevin. What I mean by promoting was, Morris was running first time as a TD. Yeah. And I met you down in what, what we call in Limerick, the island fields. They don't like to be called that. They call it St. Mary's Park. But um, and I asked you to come down to give a talk to the Historical Society. Well, I don't know what went wrong. Something went wrong. But we'll talk about that some other time, about a talk to the Historical Society. But, Jerry, I'd like to know, first of all, your views. What did you think of 1916? What I mean by that is... Did you think that they were too early? The people involved were they too late? Should they have gone from 1916? What do you think of it? Well, first of all, Tony, thank you for having me on your program and thank you, Tom, as well. And well done on all your work. It's really important, I believe, that uh, we know our own history and we tell our own stories. And that's particularly important uh, that we localize it, that we get to know the characters. You know, sometimes history is written about the big people, the generals, the statespersons, the Tishig, the prime ministers. Whereas, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I, I just love social history and I love local history. And if, if it's boiled down, uh, you, you can feel a real contact with it and you can understand. So what do I think of 1916? Well, if you consider that 1916 was only a few decades removed from the Great Hunger. So the country was on its knees. Half the people had either died or been exiled across on the coffin ships to North America and other parts of the world. Uh, poverty, destitution, was widespread. And yet, in the six, seven, eight, nine years before 1916, there was a mustering of people who had a different vision, uh, men and women from across the island, uh, including in the north, including in Limerick, uh, who, who thought that we could make a better fist of governing ourselves and who also thought that a republic in which everybody would have rights uh, was the way to go. And they also embraced uh, Gaelic games, culture, our language. Uh, so there was a, a flowering of uncommon lower class Gael, Conan and the Gael, numerous other dramatic and other uh, societies across the island. So. You then have to put all of these matters in their own time. So it's easy for us with the benefit of hindsight to look back at any historical event and to uh, make judgments on it. But you can only judge historical events in their own time. So we had the Tories in, in London playing the orange card, uh, a phrase which Randall Churchill coined, joining with some elements here on the island of Ireland to prevent the Home Rule Bill going through. And, and that happened over quite a long time. And I think there were three, three different efforts to get it through. And then with the outbreak of uh, the First World War, it was suspended for the duration of the war. In the meantime, the Tories had armed uh, their their co-conspirators. There was a coup, effectively a coup in, in the North. And it was as much about British politics and the Tories usurping their own democratic uh, 
parliamentary tradition than it was about anything that was happening on the island of, of Ireland. So enter then uh, 1913, the Great Dublin Lockout, the, the formation of the Citizens' Army, the continued the formation of the volunteers, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the support from uh, Irish America in terms of funding uh, ar arising. And then we also have to remember that the original intention was to have a national rising. It wasn't just to be Dublin centric, it was to be across the, the island of Ireland. So I think it was the most courageous thing you could imagine. Let me just ask you, well, to me, right, I have no education. I left school at 14. I learned very little about, about I always got confused between the War of Independence and the Civil War. I didn't know the difference for years, right? But having looked back at 1916, I don't know about you, Tom, whether you agree or not with me now, but to me, it was badly organised, I think. Wasn't it? I mean, we had been tried so many times in 1868 and all the other things back. And to me, we can talk about Redmond in a minute. To me, Redmond, I can say, was a fool, I think. He was blinded by the English, I think, John Redmond, with regard to the Irish and independence. I don't think it was ever going to come about. Mm -hmm. What would you think? Yeah. Home rule, yeah. 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 What would you think of, of John Redmond in that and his involvement? Well, if you're asking me, Tony, yeah. <clears throat> first of all, it wasn't so badly organized. Uh, the fact is that any plan, once it starts, has to be tweaked. So they, 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 they had a plan. They were bringing in guns from uh, on 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 the the odd, if I remember rightly, Roger Casement mm -hmm. was bringing it in. There's yeah. a good sound Limerick connection to that. Yeah, the yeah. cars came from uh, Limerick, uh, and also incidentally, uh, a young man from uh, Charlie Monaghan, a young man from Short Strand and East mm -hmm. East Belfast was part of that. So they were sent down to take over the radio station at Valencia. And they included people who had expertise on wireless and all of that carry on. And unfortunately, they took a wrong turn and the, the, car, the car careered into the sea and the volunteers involved were, were drowned. So what, what the original plan was they were going to put up a, a decoy to lure the Brit Navy away from where a casement was coming in. And of course, that then didn't happen because the volunteers, unfortunately, uh, were killed. Now, also bear in mind that uh, Owen McNeil had got wind of the rising and had put out a countermanding order cancelling mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So I know here in Belfast, like the, the volunteers in Belfast, their, their plan was to go to Tyrone, which they duly did and mustered there. And then they got word uh, to go back home that it was over. And the same sort of uh, uh, conflict, or if that's the right word, uh, was sent, uh, uncertainty, plans cancelled, and so on. So subsequently, it ended up there, there were some actions in County Louth, there were some actions in Galway led by Liam Mallows. The volunteers did muster in Limerick itself, but the, the substantive part of the rising took part in uh, Dublin, but have, have, have no doubt about it. The plan, uh, and Sean McDermott was one of the main people involved, the plan was a very ambitious plan for a national uh, uprising across the island. Now, the most significant thing I believe, I mean, there are two significant things. One is the British Empire is the largest empire in the history of humanity. The largest empire ever. And for a small group, a handful, like hundreds of Irish Republican men and women, to go out against that empire was a hugely audacious, courageous, brave uh, initiative. Secondly, the proclamation is probably the most important thing to come out of the rising. That mm -hmm. proclamation, which I believe 
still stands up today, over 100 years later, addresses itself to Irish men and Irish women at a time when women didn't even have the boat, uh, goes through essentially a mission statement of rights, of entitlements, uh, anti-sectarian, secular, uh, but based upon the premise that the people of Ireland should have the ownership of the island of Ireland and govern it in, in, our, own, uh, in, in, in our own way, free from interference from any outside elements. So I think, I think there are the two big things come out of it. Uh, the, the, the audacity of the volunteers you, and, the, you, and um, you, the principled proclamation, which is yet to be fulfilled. You mentioned, <clears throat> Jerry, about the Limerick involvement. I suppose the, the principal agitator was John Daly from Limerick, and um, he had served time in, in jail in England and came back. And he was the main organiser with, with Casement and some others in organising the, the rebellion. Uh, and of course, his uh, nephew, Ned Daly, uh, was, uh, and Tom Clark, his son in law, his brother in law, were, uh, Edmund, Edmund Daly's brother in law, were, were executed. But there was a lot of being, the Daly's drove a lot of the um, organising and, you know, the background work, which didn't get a lot of credit uh, for, for the rising, you know. So, uh, John Daly was an important figure uh, in 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 the um, in the whole organising of the of the. But <clears throat> I, I went to school in West Limerick in a place called Lynn, and the the signatories, the, you know, the, the famous picture, of the signatories hung up on the wall, and yeah. we we. But the, the one thing about the rising, I suppose, it was a one sided. Uh, um, I suppose the victors. It was a one sided story. We we never heard about the other side of the policemen or that who were, who were executed. Like, and I know the DMP had a bad name from the nineteen thirteen lockout, but there was a man from Glen who was related to my grandmother, who was the first man to be ex executed in or to be killed in in the rebellion. And strangely, we never heard about him. You know, so it it was a kind of a slanted story. But nowadays there is. I know we had this whole. Black and tan, the, the black and tan, and whether they should be commemorated, the REC, and that. But uh, there is a more balanced, and I suppose there's more information coming out now on the rising, you know, where we can look at the dailies, uh, all the Limerick people who were involved, you know. Yeah, well, well, Ned Daly famously was executed by the British as one of the yeah. leaders, and 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 by all accounts was a very, very brave leader. And you're, you're right, uh, Tom Clark. Was married into the Daly family. In fact, Tom yeah. Clark spent some time in, uh, yeah. and and Limerick through his wife Kathleen. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, in all of these great enterprises, of course, there are the people who go out and organise and fundraise and arm and train and and so on. And the, the Dailies were one of those uh, mm -hmm. leaders. Now, I, I I take issue. I mean, first of all. It, it is dreadful that anyone gets killed. It yeah. is, so let's, let's say that firmly. Uh, and that there are human stories behind uh, all, all of these deaths. But when it comes to the point, are you for the Republic or are, for your, for, or, or are you for the Empire? Are mm -hmm. you for the people of the island to govern ourselves in the way that we want to govern ourselves democratically and on the basis of equality? Or are you for some misbegotten uh, government in London who will never govern, even to this day, Ireland in anybody's interest except what they perceive to be English self-interest? So yeah. people have a choice. The, the, the RIC was a volunteer organization. People mm -hmm. took their choice. And you know, thankfully, the days of violent conflict in Ireland are over, yeah. including in the latest phase. All of that's done and dusted. There's now a peaceful way to go forward. And we, we need to remind ourselves of this. There was no peaceful way in 1916. Mm -hmm. you know, there was no peaceful way that you could have self-determination and determine your own, your own future. There was no peaceful way up until the Good Friday Agreement. There now is a peaceful way. And, yeah. and we can we can honor as we see fit those who died uh, before during the conflict 
But to, to serve all their memories well, we need to avail of the opportunity to peacefully bring about an end to British rule in our mm. country, if that's what the people want. Yeah. What about... Well, I think, I think we, yeah. Sorry, Tom. No, just, we saw during the whole Brexit deal, like, you know, uh, I think somebody said that, you know, when the British reneged on the, on, on the treaty there just around Brexit, that the only people that were, that were surprised were uh, they weren't surprised were Limerick people, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. and reneging <laughs> the treaty. So yeah. I mean, like the the, the the Irish, like anybody who like come back to Redmond, anybody who trusted the Britain's word uh, were proved history proved them to be wrong because you know even down to the treaty, you know, the double dealing and. I don't think necessarily, Tom, that uh, John Redmond, and who, who am I to say, I don't know, yeah. really, necessarily trusted the British. The fact mm -hmm. is he, he, he supported the empire. And yeah. that, that's, that's the debating thing. You see, the Republicans uh, supported the people of the island of Ireland. But, mm -hmm. but others, like Redmond, supported the notion of, of, of empire. And of, you know, I mean, the English government of, of those days used to think that they owned parts of the human race. You know, I mean, think yeah. about it. You know, look, look at all the countries in the world they went into. That, uh, and and uh, the, the history of Ireland is repeated in Asia yeah. and in China and in Africa. Palestine. Palestine. And in the Middle East uh, and yeah. in, in North yeah. America. You know, it's, it's repeated everywhere. So Redmond took his... Uh, and took his his side, and th through a mixture of of uh, I suppose happenings, uh, he 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 was seen to be on the wrong side. You know the the yeah. what, what, what we can talk in a moment about what transpired after the uh, rising, but you you could not but uh, fail to uh, appreciate that those who went out uh, to, to fight for freedom, to declare a republic, were declaring against the empire and declaring mm. against Redmond and, and his ilk as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But can, can I just move on a bit now? After, the, after 1916, the execution of that, we move on into 19, we'll say 1919, 1920. I mean, what were they hoping to gain in 1919, 1920? I mean, the Republicans, what were they hoping to get? Independence, obviously. Well, well, first of all, let me say this, if I can, uh, Tony. Sometimes the, the rating is portrayed as, you know, a blood sacrifice and, you mm. know, a, a great act of uh, self-sacrifice and, and so on, and that the British were very bloody-minded. The British were not, were no such thing. They may have been bloody-minded, but what they did effectively was remove the leadership. The people, the philosophers, the poets, the thinkers, the, the political uh, writers who had put together their proclamation, who had developed the politics of, of, of the regime, were removed. They killed them. So the, the, those who came in after them uh, were not the same people who had put the whole thing together. You know, the Pierces, the Connollys, you know, the, the McDermott's, the Clarks, the Plunkett's and so on, they were all gone. And what 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 the British effectively did was was to, and, and I think they did it quite deliberately, was to rob the struggle, was 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 to rob the, the revolutionary side, if you want to call it that, of their leadership. Now the the the, the, the continuum of struggle, you know, because remember, 1916 didn't happen out of the blue, as we have just discussed. Mm -hmm. So naturally, that caused huge upset through the country. It went into a different phase. The 1918 election happened. The people had a free vote. Sinn Féin became the party because it hadn't been previously, but became the party under which the Republicans contested the election, and they got a majority. So the, the, the Irish people declared for their own parliament. They didn't want the British parliament. 
they declared for their own parliament and they won uh, uh, an outstanding majority and 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 support of that. In the meantime, we see appreciate we're still under military occupation. The British are still sitting on the people in the countryside, in the towns, in the villages, in the cities. We're still sitting on the people. So out of that comes, I think, uh, actually on the first day that the first dial met, out of that comes the ambush at Sullahead Bug. And then the rest is is, is history. Uh, what, what I think transpired after that was that the, the, the treaty and the negotiations of the treaty, some fatal mistakes were made. Now, bear in mind in between time, again, the role of Limerick. I mean, the Limerick Soviet, even though it only lasted for a very short time, uh, was a very, very good example of, of a popular the struggle because it, it wasn't just the IRA versus the Brits. Yeah. It was uh, following the, uh, I think it was volunteer Bobby Byrne. Oh, but, yeah. uh, he was on hunger strike uh, and following his his killing and the the funeral, I mean, how, how the Brits dealt with his funeral, the, the Trades Council in Limerick declared a general strike. And, and for whatever period it was, for maybe 10, 11, 12 days, you, you had the vast majority of workers in the city of Limerick withdrawing their labor in protest at British military occupation and action in, in the city of, of Limerick. And I, I you know, the, they, they bore the brunt of condemnation from the bishops, from, they didn't get the support they required from the trade union movement nationally. Obviously, the business community and the British military acted against them. But I, I, I think that was a wonderful episode in the uh, history of Limerick of, of, of peaceful resistance, mm. of withdrawing their labour and then organising themselves while under military occupation so that everybody in the city was looked after by the people of, of the city. So, yeah. when, I, when, sorry. I, 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 I don't like this, you know, what if... You see these problems. What if nothing happened? Like, but there is one thing you have to think about. If the if the British didn't execute the leaders, you know, would we have the emergence of Sinn Féin to, at, in this way it did? Uh, you know, what way would Connolly and Pierce have progressed the revolution? Like even you know afterwards. Well, you can you can you can get the answer. <clears throat> you obviously can't get the. Complete, yeah. answer, but you can get the answer from their writings. Yeah, they they were both very mindful of the need to reach out to the unionists in the north. They yeah. were both very mindful of the way unionist working class people were divided from others and used by the ruling class. Yeah. They, they were both very very clear. Connolly described it, and it's, 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 it's something that Bobby Sands picked up, God rest him, mm. the reconquest of Ireland by the Irish people. Yeah. So, so it wasn't a matter of just replacing British rule or English rule with native rule or some other sort of rule. It was a matter of the people themselves yeah. Yeah. making our own sense of freedom. So, so uh, you know, you, you can't obviously plot a course but, mm. but you could you could tell, I I think particularly from the two men you mentioned, uh, what what trajectory they would have taken. You yeah. you, could, you could almost tell that. By I, I, you mentioned what, the, by the, the you mentioned you mentioned the nineteen thirteen lockout, and Jim Larkin was of a similar mind. He maintained it was the working class against the British. You know that you need to bring along all working class regardless of religion, and that's Piercing Hunley had that as well. Like that. You know, yeah, and, and, and Larkin famously organized workers here in Belfast City, yeah. as did James Connolly. I mean, yeah. James Connolly worked here in the city, in fact, was living in Belfast City That's until right. the rising. So yeah. they had first hand experience of yeah. the way working people were debated. And, and the Limerick Soviet yeah. is an example of, of uh, the willingness of, of people to embrace uh, in their own working class interest. The only weapon that they had, which was to withdraw their labour. Yeah. So you know, yeah. there's, there's, you, you could see, you could see how things may have went in a, in a, a different direction. But you're right to say you don't like the, the what if. You know, 
If yeah. your granny was your granda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where would you be today? So yeah, yeah. Uh, but but the Brits, you see, the Brits uh, had had long experience, mm. uh, and 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 even in recent times, like in the, in the fifties and the sixties, had long experience of withdrawing from other people's countries and doing so in a way which suited their own particular uh, interest. They very rarely left uh, something that suited the people who they had colonized in the first place. So, so what they did with the Irish was they divided and conquered. Yeah, That's what they did, the oldest trick in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that was the failure of the leadership and again, we can only judge them in our own time. Maybe we would have done exactly the same thing. We don't know. Yeah. But I, I think it was a huge mistake for the negotiating team to go to London, to stay there for such a long period, to yeah. take themselves plenipotentiary powers, to sign up for a treaty without bringing it back to be agreed with their peer group, with their with their comrades. That was, that was a vital mistake because if you're united, you can practically do anything once yeah. you debate. That's your your bond Yeah. That's, well, that's what I want to ask you about now. Is what did you think of of the treaty with regards? I mean, I learned very little. I said already to you about the difference between Michael Collins. I remember going to school that if you got into a classroom with a teacher whose people came from at uh, one side, he told you that De Valera was the greatest man that ever lived, and that. Uh, uh, he was a fantastic man. Then you went to a different class the following year and you met the opposite. And the teacher told you that Michael Collins was the greatest man that ever lived and De Valera got him shot and he'd been a great man. And uh, you ended up confused. I didn't know who was who for years. And thank God I, I, I was apolitical growing up. So what is your opinion on, on the whole thing about going to London, Collins, De Valera, what... I mean, there's things coming out now that we never knew before, as you know about De Valera, which I never knew, about he going to America and calling himself the president of Ireland. I never knew that till about, about a month ago. So what is your opinion on the whole treaty thing? Well, I don't think it's fair. Uh, I mean, I have lots of things to take issue with with De Valera. But I don't think it's fair to say that he went, to, you know, in a disparaging way that he went to America. Uh, um, Irish America was very, very important. The Irish Americans funded, funded the raising, and mm. most struggles are require an international dimension. Like look, yeah. look at our own peace process. We needed the international dimension to get yeah. us into the Good Friday Agreement. Look, look at what people are trying to do around Palestine. Look at what happened with the anti-apartheid movement. It all needed the international co community. So it was entirely appropriate. Uh, that that and and the Republicans are internationalists. It was entirely appropriate that the leadership of that time tried to muster the power of Irish America against the British, with the different forums and con conventions that were taking place after the uh, the First World War, and to try and get Ireland uh, and and the Republic uh, guaranteed. No, I I think the essential mistake. The fundamental mistake that was made was that the negotiating team was divided from their peer group, from their organization, from the rest of their leadership back home. I mean, not to be comparing them at all, at all, but when we did the negotiations for the Good Friday Agreement, we went back into the Sinn Féin Ardesh. I mean, I, I didn't sign on, Martin McGuinness didn't sign on, or any of the rest of us for the Good Friday Agreement. We said we would recommend it. But we went back to the Ardesh and we went, we, 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 we briefed the Ardesh for hours and then we adjourned the Ardesh and we came back a few weeks later so, so that we ended up with a united uh, party, a united sense mm. of uh, a mass movement and struggle. I had, had uh, and I know this is the what if scenario, but if Collins had a taken uh, and, and the rest of you, but can't blame Collins on his own. Uh, but he prophetically said he was signing his own, uh, his own death warrant. But if Collins had taken back the treaty to the Dáil before, if he had said to the British, OK, yeah. right, this is the best you can do, that's fair enough. We'll bring it back to our leadership and we will decide what to do. 
and then they would have been in a much strong, powerful uh, position because they would have done it as a united movement. But I mean, that's all gone. There's nothing we can do about that uh, now except to learn the lessons of it. And we also need to appreciate, because uh, sometimes this is over overlooked, you know, the whole focus is on the North, like a conservative state, a sectarian state, an apartheid state, an orange state was set up in the North. The one in the South wasn't much better. You know, the poor weren't looked after. The women weren't looked after. The relationship with the, the controlling power of the Catholic hierarchy became dreadfully oppressive. If, 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 you know, you're, you're talking about not learning your own history. You weren't taught your own history because the, the, the state wasn't the type of state that was envisaged in 1916. And then revisionism kicks in. And, and remember, any state <clears throat> that depends on immigration to sustain itself. And that, that's, that, that's the, the awful plight of Irish people that, that we, 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 we've had to be scattered to the four corners. Things are better now, thankfully, but we've had to be scattered <clears throat> to the four corners of the world. So two conservative states were established and Liam Mallows at the time warned, Liam Mallows said, be careful. If we go with the treaty, men will get into power. And when men get into power, they don't want and won't want to give up that power. And he was absolutely right. Yeah. I, I think, I think um, M. de Valera, like, uh, I'm like Tony, I'm, I'm, I'd be apolitical on that, but I think he gets a lot, he gets a lot of bad press. And, um, you know, I mean, even that horrible, uh, terrible Michael Collins film where they portrayed him like the, the, the guy who portrayed him came straight out of playing the sheriff of Nottingham, you know, the evil sheriff of Nottingham. And we didn't play De Valera. And, uh, it was a terrible. I, th I think it's a terrible depiction of of, of De Valera, uh, you know. And I know, he, like he was, he had to bring the church in, uh, the power of the church. But it was of his time, you know. It's it's easy to look back now and say, you know, he should have stood up to the church. But the church was a powerful. Like, it was like the British Empire it was a powerful organization. So I mean, I I think he gets a lot of bad press. What do you think, Jerry? Well, he does get bad press, uh, and uh, you know the, the 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 easy way to tell history is to depict it through personalities. Yeah. So what I was saying in my opening remarks, I I prefer history which is social and which deals with all the small people. But the simplest way is to sum it all up, depending on what side you're on. You know, yeah. uh, Michael Collins, good guy; Eamon Devil yeah. or a bad guy, or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. Uh, depending on on who your teacher is, yeah. uh, so, so he does get bad press, and he did some dreadful things. But mm. you see, the 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 guide to all of this is, and remember now, the state had the battle against great economic challenges and yeah. and so on. That's that's fair enough. But see, the essence of republicanism is rights. So so just by being born. You have rights. It doesn't matter whether you're a woman. It doesn't matter whether you're a man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you have disabilities. It doesn't matter whether you live in a rural area or you're born into an urban area. You have rights, very, very mm -hmm. basic rights. And the, the job of government is to both promote and protect those rights. So if, if we apply that test to Davalera, then he failed. Mm -hmm. He failed miserably. He, he, he may have done good things, in terms of the uh, Black and Tan War or the struggle. But remember, we're still partitioned over 100 years uh, later. Uh, we were in the best position we ever wore to bring an end to all of this so, so that it does become uh, history. But I mean, the awfulness of the Civil War, uh, I mean, we're trying to deal with legacy issues here in the North a, a very short time after the conflict was that was was ended there was never any attempt to deal with legacy issues after the civil war and and this is the centenary coming up of the civil war never any attempt to deal with it you know the the republicans were hounded out of the place uh you, you can you, you could appreciate if you just put yourself into say you were a volunteer in limerick at the time and you stayed pro-treaty and you're out in 1916 and then 
there follows all of the, the, the conflict and then your own brothers in arms end up in government mm. and you're and you're 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 a bit and, and you're living in Limerick on the poor ground. And yeah. you know, I mean it just was dreadful, dreadful. And it, and it's the old thing as I said previously of of divide and conquer. So we need a healing process, not just dealing with recent events in the north, but re- dealing with events across the 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 island, not least the period that we're talking about. And just want to make this remark, and, and I say this quite often, you can't understand anything about Irish history, nothing, unless you see it in the context of the colonization of Ireland by England. You can't understand anything uh, unless you see it in that context. We are a colonized people. Right? Now, we're no mean people. We, 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 we survived it, right? And, and we're strong and we're resilient and we're hopeful, but if, 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 if we don't acknowledge the fact that we're a colonized people, we were colonized. Our language was almost destroyed. Uh, a lot of our culture was almost destroyed. Uh, we were we were sucked into wars. We were sucked into wars against each other. And it's only now again that we have the opportunity to recreate ourselves and 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 to get on with the reconquest, as Conley described it. Mm. Well, you, you mentioned. Sorry, Tony. You mentioned, fa- you mentioned you mentioned the famine there earlier, and uh, like you know, I, I think that that was something that wasn't uh, you know the, the, the Irish people didn't didn't deal with very well the whole emigration. Um, I mean, the, another thing that that, that an out, outcome from the colonization of the British Empire was the amount of Irish people who fought their wars. You know, yeah, and, yeah, absolutely, and, yeah. and we're and, there's still even the First World War, the amount of people that fought fought in the First mm-hmm. World War. Uh, you know, and it was, uh, I often say it was loyalty to the half crown rather than the crown. It was, the, you know, they were d- doing it for money. It was, you know, because they were so poor. Uh, yeah, and it well, it was an economic, it was, it was an economic, yeah. you know, a necessity for some people as as, as they would see it. Uh, yeah. But but as the words of the songs uh, say, uh, oh, had I died by Pierce's side. Yeah. yeah. Or fallen by yeah. Cahal Brew. And also, yeah. as you know better than me, it wasn't a famine, you know. They were exporting food. The, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. food was here, you know. And 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 similar things happened in other places where the British yeah. Empire yeah. had 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 assumed control. But, but have, having said that, there was a lot of Irish people who profiteered from the famine, and you know, as well as yes, well, that's, as, that that's human nature, and that yeah. that that's again what that's what shapes us. That's why, mm. and and my opinion. In my opinion, for a long time, the stroke politics, and for a long time, you know, th- th- that that part of our character that will bullshit, you know, that'll yeah. drama us, that'll uh, have have the crack with the person that's putting us down, yeah. uh, the could the could her aspect, yeah. which uh, sometimes can be very funny and very lovable, but that comes from the fact that if you had to feed your family. And you went into the landlord's domain and yeah. you stole some of his rabbits or sheep yeah. or deer yeah. and you met him on the road, right? You would say, hello, sir, how you doing? Top of yeah. the morning to you. It's a great day. And you'd, yeah. and you'd be as friendly as anything because you, you, you had the drop on him. You were feeding your family yeah. by stealing what was rightfully yours in the first instance. And, yeah. and that yeah. part of our character is shaped. It's, yeah. it's, it's shaped by some of the events that you have just described. Yeah, and you see that in in landlord villages, you know, where, where I grew up in a landlord village, and I mean in the countryside, but near near, and there's a lot of because you were relying on the local landlord for your employment, for your for your very existence, you know, and yeah. the, and and you're you're right, like that you had to kowtow and you know, uh, and be as you said, the cute to to survive, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. To begin to my evening still about about a month ago. Uh, I, I hope I have his name correctly. Or Bonner Law. He seems to have been. Yeah, Bonner Law. Yeah, yeah. He, seems, he doesn't seem to have been a very nice person. That's well, he may, I, been, he may have been a nice person to his family, but he was a scoundrel and a rascal. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and you know these these folks 
serve their own class interest and their own self interest. So the, the, the whole focus, you know, you could say the same thing about uh, Boris Johnson. You know, he, he doesn't care about any working class person in, in England, mm-hmm. but what he does care about is the ruling class and staying in power and ma- making sure that the Tories stay in power. So mm-hmm. that, that's why you get, you mentioned the, the, the breaking of the Treaty of Limerick and here we've had within the last five years the breaking of all sorts of commitments, the yeah. breaking of all sorts of uh, treaties. Yeah. You know, per- Perfidious Albion is, uh, yeah. is, is, is a good description. So Bonner Law is, is, is cut from that stripe. He's, he, he was the, the Boris Johnson of his time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I never heard of him till about a month ago. I saw a program on him, and mm. he's a ruthless character to me, anyway. As we seem to mm. and he really mm. wanted to push this six county bit. From what I could gather on the program, as I said, I'd never heard of him, but uh, he didn't seem a very nice person. He really was completely pro six counties, which brings me to something else now. I can never understand why you refer to it as well, Northern Ireland. I would never call it Northern Ireland. I would always just say, are you going up to the six counties? Because I've asked people, is Donegal in the north or the south? Mm. And usually people say, oh, Donegal is in the south. But I'd say it's further so. How could it be in the south if it's in the north or vice versa? No. But why do people keep saying Northern Ireland? It sounds like a demilitarized zone across from Dublin to Galway, like, like Vietnam or like Korea. Why do people keep referring it to Northern Ireland? Well, I suppose it's, it's, it's the official name of the statelet. Uh, I rarely use the, the name I would refer to, the North or the Six Counties myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know lots of people, including people younger than me, who, who would never use the name. But I mean, all of that shows the, the, uh, the failure of partition. You know, that people can't even use the name of the place shows how, <laughs> you know, how, how, how divisive uh, partition is. And I was doing a Zoom call with uh, some people from the, the border counties, from the border corridor. And uh, it was revealing, even though I know all of this, but it was still revealing to, to listen to them talking about. They, these are people who live right up, you know, at Katie, right, you know, yeah. right up beside Armagh. Uh, and, 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 and how the border divides houses and divides fields and divides families. And, but the people that each side of the border, like they socialize, they go to school, they go to work, they court each side of the border. And yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's all just, I think, shows a great opportunity we have to bring the border to an end and to, to, to figure out a way of doing this that, that uh, unionists can have a, a comfort that their rights will be protected by the rest of us. The best guarantor of anybody's rights are your neighbours. It, it isn't, oh, okay, you can, you, you can have recourse to the law and you can look to governments or police uh, services to guarantee your rights. And of course, that's, that's their function. But the best, the best guarantee of anybody's rights is your neighbour. Is your friend, is, 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 is the other person in the village or the town, is the other citizen. So, so we now have an opportunity to, to bring about a, a new dispensation, a new Ireland that, that we can all be comfortable in. And then we can tackle these big issues like homelessness, poverty, inequality, make, making sure that people with disabilities uh, you know, have, yeah. have, have, have their right. Uh, but but how... How do you do that, Jerry? When you have a cohort, you know, of units who w- won't have any truck with the Irish language, you know, so, like I was surprised last night when I turned on BBC Two, I think it was, and they had a program about fishing, Australia, yeah, on BBC yeah. Two. No, I, I, it was probably only BBC in Northern Ireland, but I thought it was a slight shift from the, the old traditional BBC. But at the same time, when you have, you know, units who come out and say they won't. You know, they mock the language, and it's the very language that was stolen from Ireland, if you wish. Like, yeah, well, they, they mean, won't. We, we, we just have to work with those people. I mean, I'm I'm living among yeah. them, and and they're not yeah. all from that stripe. One of yeah. the, 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 the there's a GAA club now in uh, East Belfast, which is made up of a mixture of unionist and yeah. nationalist. Uh, there there is a, a thriving Irish language. 
medium uh, sector here in the city of Belfast, including in East Belfast. So, so not all unionists are cut from that. Yeah, state. I know. Yeah, you're yeah. right. There is a fundamentalist brand, but every society has those fundamentalist brands. Yeah, right? every society. The trick of society is to make sure that they don't rule the roost. Yeah, they, they yeah. can have their opinions. They can have their yeah. views as long as they keep it peacefully, and yeah. and and so on. And the rest of us should get on with our lives. And yeah. the way you will change those people is by changing the political conditions in which they live. Once you change yeah. the political, like Act McGill is now going to come in. There is going to be an Irish language act. So yeah. I mean, that, that's what will happen. Uh, the other yeah. rights will come in. But be certain about that. All they can do is slow it up. So yeah. when it comes to the uh, the business of getting a referendum and winning a referendum, uh, I have no doubt that a section of unionism uh, are, are people who currently feel betrayed by the DUP or by Boris Johnson will see that their best place is with the rest of us. I have no, I have no doubt about yeah. that, but it needs planned. It can't be yeah. plucked out of the air. You can't be bounced into it. You have to be inclusive. You have to talk. You have to describe all the things that didn't happen in 1916 and 1918 and 1919 during the Civil War, all of those things that didn't happen based on dialogue now need to happen now, and the Irish yeah. government should be leading it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember, Jerry, um, Tom would tell you this, I have a huge interest in dance bands, right? Just just for a minute now, in, in the, what we call the old show bands. All my brothers played in dance bands. But I remember being with my brother <laughs> in Banbridge, and I was only about 14 years of age, I'd say 13 or 14, and this girl said to me in the, in the hall, and I'm taking off in the local language, she says to me, is he using the feast yet? Mm. I said, is he using the feast yet? <laughs> I hadn't a bull's notion what she was on about. Yeah. So luckily my brother said, yes, he is. I didn't know what she meant by the free state. Yeah, yeah. I learned in afterwards what she meant by that. But I hadn't a bull's notion what, what the free state was, you know. And with her, her local dialect, I didn't, being a young friend, I didn't know what she was even on about, you know. But Belfast was a great place for, we just digress a small bit now here. Belfast was a great place for dance halls. My brothers, I remember being there in the 60s and I've been fascinated really by the sweets that they sold in Belfast that you couldn't get, we'll say, in Limerick. Mars bars and spangles and things like that. But I remember being in Romano's. And a great title for a dance hall, which I'm sure you remember, the Boom Boom Rooms. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also going out to Caproni's, I was in, um, what's the seaside place out further, out near? Bangor. Bangor, yeah. Bangor, Bangor, yeah. 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 I remember yeah. going to Caproni's, and like that. Do you remember any of those halls in, in Belfast? Yeah, yeah, those those halls prospered, uh, particularly in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, I, do, I would only remember them in the 60s and 70s. Obviously, the conflict brought an awful lot to an end or at least reduced it. But in fairness, a lot of those dance bands kept playing right through the, the, the conflict, even even up to the, the, the awful attack on the Miami show band. You know, yeah. I mean, they still played, like in Joe Dolan and uh, Rory Daniels, and I, I can't remember any of the rest of them. And then Philomena Bagley was, was going the rounds. Uh, so it, it endured. Uh, even in our worst days, there was always somebody there looking for a, a Kaylee or a dance or a, a jig. Yeah. Tony, I have to go soon. Have another thing at one o'clock. Oh, yeah. That's all. I'm just curious did you remember some of the halls, you know? And yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. traveling with my brothers all over Derry. There was a priest, when well, you knew him or not, Father Jimmy Shields. Jimmy was from Derry. And uh, he, was a, he was a priest and he was moved out. <laughs> He disputed the bishop, but they moved him to the four. But on the crest of, of uh, Derry, there's a skeleton on the crest of Derry, the city arms. Yeah. And he explained to us, he said, I always remember him, Jimmy looking up and he said, do you know why that's there? And I said, no. He said, he's a Catholic waiting for a house. And there's mm -hmm. no, no, no skeleton. He was, he was waiting for a house in Derry. In, yeah. in Derry. Yeah. Jerry, can myself and Tom, can we thank you, Jerry, for coming thank on? You, yeah. And thank you, was, Tom, and thank you, Tony. And did it make a difference to, to, to get to talk to you in normal circumstances, you know? And uh, 
we will meet again. You'll have to come down, Jerry, sometime and give the talk to the Historical Society. And uh, we'll go back over some of the ground. The only thing is, I have a few more questions for you, you know. All right, all right. Well, can yeah. I say this just, just to keep things local? Uh, Morris Quinlivan got back the flag, yeah. which yeah. the volunteers flew in Limerick, yeah. um, which the British stole. He got that yeah. back. So, uh, yeah. on top of all the other good work he's done, I just want to recognize that that was a starting piece of work that he got the flag back for yeah. Limerick. It's it's in oh, the yeah, museum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and good luck. To, good luck to the hurlers. All right, and, and to Antrim footballers. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. No. Well, I, I think I'd, I think I'd beat Antrim myself today. You know. No, no, you wouldn't. No, uh, no, no, no. Okay. Good luck, Joe. Okay, Tom. Right. I can get this.